Welcome to the other side where we take a ride each week and discuss our guests' personal journey, their hard work, sacrifice, struggles and failures, along with their passion, dedication, and determination. This is The Other Side. Hello everybody, welcome to The Other Side. At This week, I am pumped up. Uh, you know, most everybody out there know that I love the fight game. I grew up with boxing, but lately, you know, MMA, UFC is a big thing. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to meet these guys in front of me. How are we doing, Chris? We're doing wonderful, Carlos. It's a great morning here in San Diego. We're super pumped to have these guys on. I, as well, love the fight game. Um, I, my boys, both of my boys are into it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pumped to, to get into this conversation. Let's do it. Sweet, man. Let's do it. Guys. First of all, I know it's easy in Orlando, but why don't you introduce yourselves real quick? Yeah, this is easy. You can. I'll go by OJ. Everybody yeah. calls me Orlando. OJ. Orlando, Orlando Jimenez, Jimenez, but I go by OJ. Yeah. So I go by Israel, but you know, just easy. Start calling me Easy or Is. Yeah. So I'm stuck with it for the <laughs> is. You know. It is yeah. what it I is. Even have a son. Call, you know, I mean, I even have a son named Little Izzy. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, but he's not a junior. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for having us. We're glad yeah, to be thank here. You. Cool, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. First of all, I mean, obviously the the fight game, but uh, so just for people out there, I mean, let's start by kind of educating people about because usually people, when you say UFC, especially UFC or MMA, people grab automatically think UFC because it's the biggest out there. Right. But do you do, do, you do UFC? Yeah. Like that. <laughs> but yeah. but the the reality of it is that like uh, things like Bellator and Combate America are huge it's because the sport itself is huge it's worldwide right? right so why don't you tell us about like who you guys are with and what uh, you know what are you doing yeah we're based out of here in San Diego you know uh we were both veterans military veterans uh, small business nice owners. thank you very much yeah, thank, thank you. you for your service you. guys small business owners but what brought us really together is just the the, the fight community you know I, I've known and grown up with Dominic Cruz since we were wrestling in, in southern Arizona to I went off into the military he became a professional fighter and I went to college to wrestle and then he became the WEC champion so every summer I'd come here to train with him uh, which led to our relationship in fighting and I became that wrestling coach Wow. Right. So as he was ascending into the UFC um, and winning that title, I was alongside just training with him and never had an intention to fight. I thought those guys, that's a that's a hard living. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm in school. I'm educated. Uh, but the more and more uh, I, c I continued to train with him, I became a fighter, an amateur fighter, competed for the USA world team uh, for three years. And then after I graduated from law school in 2018, Dom's like, OK, I want you to work with me and train with me. And so I became his representative and his training partner. And in that, I started fighting for combate because I was training so much and I became a pro. And so now I'm going into my fourth bout in three years just by accident. Now, let's. Wow, that's a that's a lot. That's First, a lot. Uh, yeah. Man. But uh, real quickly, the, you know, Dominic is with the UFC, right? And you're with combate. How like how does that happen? How come you so, don't follow his footsteps? So you have you have like the. Um, you have the the organizations that lead into that because even Dominic had to start in local shows in Arizona, Rage in the Cage, and then uh, Total Combat back in the day here. As okay. far back as 2006, he became the champion. And then they created um, under Zufa the WEC because the UFC before 2010 didn't have uh, weights below 155 pounds, didn't have 145, 135, 125. That was the WEC, World Extreme Cage Fighting. Okay. And so as they gained popularity um, on Versus, the channel Versus, um, mm -hmm. they, they thought it was time to merge those smaller weight divisions with the UFC. So he became, in our home state of Arizona, the day that I graduated with my bachelor's, he became the UFC very first um, Bantamweight champion of the world in our wow. home state. So that was amazing, you know, that one milestone, I'm graduating college, the other that same night, he's becoming, uh, not only defending his WC belt, but gaining the, the UFC belt. Wow. So you have you have the feeder programs just like, uh, you know, AAA or, or minor leagues. In the same fashion, you have Combate Americas, you have CFFC, LFA, um, smaller programs that feed into the bigger programs like UFC. So even he and most of our friends, Jeremy Stevens, Miles, uh, Miles Jury, Phil Davis, Angela Hill, all our teammates had to start at some point, right? It's like 
with with we grew up in wrestling so it's like middle school wrestling high school wrestling college wrestling international wrestling you know you make the world team you represent at the olympics like you build your way up okay it's a process so these programs um uh, these organizations like we were speaking about combat americas is a big feeder program um, because a lot of people might not know combat americas is owned by campbell mclaren who in 93 helped help create the ufc so they know how to operate and they know how to feed these fighters and, and groom them to prepare them for uh, the UFC, a show like the UFC, which is the biggest, right? And then you have one championship <clears throat> in Asia. You have Bellator here in the U.S. And um, that's pretty much it. Those are the big three. Okay, big but that, three. see, that's that's important too for people to know out there. So basically, like these, when you say feeder, it's like a, basically you're casting because then the UFC comes calling up if they see potential, right? Correct, and it's like be ready, right? So it's not something that I can say who, yeah, I have 15, 16 fights. I've been ranked in the uh, amateur world system for years, but I'm not a pro. I still have to, just like in boxing, you have to build that resume, right? Before you even get picked up by a golden boy. Absolutely. Because I, I saw that. You you fought you had, uh, a bunch of amateur fights also, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I had a long amateur career. Um, like, you know, and, and, and how you, you do that is you continue to train with, with world-class fighters like like Dominic Cruz. I mean, you get, that's got to be amazing for you as far I mean, not every kid coming up gets an opportunity to, to train with a guy like Dominic. Yeah, you know, you have to dream it and you declare it and then you deliver on it. You know, every time you have your hand raised or you step into the cage, like, Okay, on to the next one. What's next? Right. What's next? What's next? You know, you, what about you, Easy? Um, what about me? I'm a veteran, uh, father of four. Nice. Wow, yeah. damn, you look like a kid, man. Oh, what thank you, you. Yeah. You didn't have Nintendo rice, when you bro. were growing up or something? It's the rice. And no, <laughs> and no toys. Rice and beans. in the province, Philippines. Um, wow. Came here when I was 11. Um, really? Yes. Um really is just a different world over there a third world country absolutely you know so um, are you a beat a uh, big uh, manny pacquiao fan oh of course every i guess every filipinos you know right um is really big so what do you remember about your childhood over there oh man um give it to him <laughs> give it to him straight up well, I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's 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 tough i mean i i i grew up in poverty squatter area you know it's just really a young age you know you see people just getting killed or getting hurt just because of what not even just money sometimes it's just food right you know it's food is more valuable than than money you know but everybody's chasing money right so that was my you know that was my childhood as far as like witnessing that or even witnessing or experiencing stuff that at a young age you know so um and we got petitioned my my grandfather was a chef. Um, he did a farmer work in Oxnard. And uh, we got petitioned. There were 11 of them. So we end up getting stuck in the Philippines because the petition, when you're married and you have kids, you're going to have to wait at least 10 years wow. to get here. So um, to fast forward that, you know, we got here. You know, And besides all that, poverty lifestyle third world country lifestyle you know what i mean uh we're able to i was able to actually adjust you know especially you know brought up in the 90s here in the u.s you know so right. it's, it's it's a it's a big transaction but fast forward i didn't have any more choice join the military really but you yeah. know what uh, I, I asked you this about childhood because it's a it's a different uh, point of view a different perspective from people that are from other countries and you come here and uh, you appreciate a lot more yeah. the, the little things you know just to be able to walk down the street and lighting yeah. you know whatever everything it's 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 the amazing freedom. yeah the freedoms yeah. and liberties it's, yeah it's, right is this actually how you you know how you handle every situation either you're gonna go down or you're gonna rise you know and of course the experience and struggle is still part of it so really it's just how you how you maintain your morals and values and stuff like that you know what and you you said something about your your grandfather about you know farming and stuff like that because my family my mom's side of the family that's what they had to do they migrated to the uh, northern california back in the yeah. day and i always tell the story I'm, I'm so blessed that i didn't have to do that i actually tried it and i yeah. tell the story i was 10 years old and by 10 a.m i quit i'm like all right good yeah. thank you i'm good yeah. uh but they didn't have they couldn't yeah. they had to you know from sun rise to sundown uh to survive and so that to me 
I always when I when I drive up there and I see the San Joaquin Valley or after Bakersfield and I see those people yeah. down there, I like much respect because and I'm thankful because yeah. I didn't have to do that. I mean, yeah. I'm sure the, uh, Orlando, your 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 uh, parents, grandparents yeah, migrated. Grandparents migrated. Um, were put up migrant camps. My my father, um, even myself, from age eight until age eighteen, until I left to the military, it was working in my great uncle's um, agriculture and, and corn. Uh, at 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. because in Arizona it's hot, right? Right. So like all these, you know, my calluses are not from lifting weights or, or it's from husking corn and driving a tractor. My wow. brother, my brother and I would work for our great uncles because it's a family thing, and every young man in our family has to do it um, from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. and we got paid every Friday. How old were you when you started knowing that? Eight years old. Eight. Eight years old till till I till literally the day I left to basic training in Great Lakes, Illinois. Wow. So, hey, basic trainer must have been like, a, oh, this is. That was, you know, when you, when, <laughs> when you, when you watch young men who, who didn't know how to iron, didn't know how to groom, brush your teeth or crying because, you know, they, yeah. they had never dealt with that before adversity. And then also I was a wrestler my whole life and my dad was a professional boxer. So we had a tough upbringing. We were tough. We fought. Yeah. I mean, if you had a problem, if this rancher had a problem with his rancher. They started fought, out they, yeah no they fought right us. yeah but they fought it out through us i was just talking to oh, my wife about okay. it it's like okay <laughs> you could be playing you can be shooting bb guns right with your brothers and just your boots and wranglers and just having fun roping each other and next thing you know your dad and your uncles come hey we're gonna go over here to the pal's ranch and you go to the pal's ranch you gotta fight that rancher's son wow yep and so i was telling my wife i said you know I, what i knew to do is i had to hit him hard and first because once the kid dropped, it was over. Okay. So I'd go left high, two to the body, and drop. Like, and never lost a country boy fight. What? <laughs> and then went back to what I was doing. They didn't. They pay you, you know. And see, they, they were doing a. Uh, 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 we're human pro, cockfighting. Were, I was gonna say yeah, promoters. They were, they were, were matchmakers. They were back taking in the day. bets. They were taking bets when we were kids. <laughs> I did that up until I left. You know, like, hey, your great uncle's having a having a dispute with so and so. Grab OJ. Let's go. By that time, I knew how to box and wrestle. Right. So did, was, you, did your dad, being a boxer, did he uh, you know, teach you how to, at least the oh basics? Yeah. The, the, you know, my dad was a boxer and a, and a wrestler. My dad grew up wrestling in middle school, high school. And then um, as a young, um, from 17 on to his, even to age 30 is when he retired. We grew up, we grew up boxing. Nice. I'm a, uh, I'm art, a big, I'm a big uh, boxing guy. Uh, I was born and raised across the border. Same. And, 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 you know, I grew up with the boxing game. And uh, that's why this, this is fascinating. To me, that the the MMA and UFC, and I've done, I know that they've done a lot of good things. Um, probably looking at what boxing is doing wrong, and they've doing, uh, they've done it better. But uh, my my influence is in boxing. So do you, and you say your dad is professional, and we yeah, were a professional. He, he boxed pro. He boxed pro out of wow. Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. Wow, man, how was that? It was good. It was just you know, it was it was tough. Like there was no, it was just resilience. You know, really really tough upbringing uh, for my dad growing up. In migrant camps and growing up when things were tough you know we were we were um, minorities my father talks about that uh, migrant mentality you know yeah. it was a core group that took care of each other and that he he taught us that i tell talk my wife about you know i said when i was a kid i'm talking last night as we're laying down i said my dad would have us uh, meditate and envision what you had planned for the next day but when it came to competition he sat us down my brothers and i close your eyes and you go through that boxing match or you go through that wrestling match with your eyes closed and you would keep the timer and your your vision he taught us visualization he taught us how to focus and be prepared for those things the things that you want you can dream it and then you declare it but you have to deliver on it it has Absolutely. to be actionable and as a young age I, I what i know now is that that was my dad was preparing us for anything when it was athletics. Um, I'm not the smartest, but I graduated from law school, but I had that. I'm like, I can see myself. I can see myself graduating. I can see myself uh, holding that plaque and my family there. And, and you make those things reality. But that started with my pops, you know? My pops was that, my, he's my, my, my biggest supporter besides my wife. That's my biggest supporter to this day. And, and I'm, you know. That's, a, that's amazing. And, and I mean, as a parent, uh, that's one of the biggest things you want to uh, program your kids to be able to defend themselves and to be out there, go to the world. And yeah. We weren't bullies. You know, it wasn't like go start. It was like, but if something happens, you knew how to take care of yourself, you know, cause I have two sons, 12 and five. And it's like, okay, they're not, my youngest is going to be the fighter. My oldest is a basketball player like my wife. Cause she played ball 
up until college, but <laughs> that's all right. Uh, <laughs> we still got one left. <laughs> but we, it's not about bullies. No, no, you know? I, I, it's about I was talking self defense. And I was talking not just the, the, the mentality is about life itself, and not just about fighting, but just like, hey, like envisioning mm -hmm. that is huge. That it's, is it's that's, huge from a kid. So when I, I would tell my wife, like, I knew I was going to wrestle at Arizona State, Arizona State. I'd be on a bus at 13 years old with my headset on, listening to the Rocky soundtrack, envisioning myself. I couldn't afford to go to the ASU camps in the summer, but I could, I can dream, right? Right. And on the way that bus ride from home to school, I can see myself being maroon and gold and being a sun devil and representing. I Wait, now let me vision, ask you that. I mean, know? I know it's because you were there, Arizona, mm -hmm. but how come a sun devil? I mean, there's so many uh, well, universities I, you out there. Think this huge. is the nineties. It's a time you have, uh, you have, um, you have Leroy Smith as a head coach. It's, it's the top, it's a top five school. Um, gotcha. all my, all my heroes have gone there. We got to remember this is the mid nineties. I started wrestling in 93. This is when the UFC hit, yeah. you know, I'm 11 years old. UFC drops. Dan Severn, where did Dan Severn, where's Dan Severn from? Arizona. Where'd he go to college? Arizona State. Dan Henderson, where's he from? Okay. Where'd he go to college? Arizona State. Oh, so no all, wonder. All, yeah, all the legends. Natural. Don Fry. Where's Don Fry from? Arizona. Where'd he go to college? Arizona State. Wow. So it was a breeding ground to, I knew that all these legends that were champions in the UFC and in pride were former Arizona State University Sun Devil wrestlers. That's what I wanted. And I envisioned that as a kid. And even though I went through the military and spent my, my year in, in Iraq and overseas, and I wrestled for the Navy, I wrestled internationally for the Navy, got two national titles, and then earned a scholarship to wrestle at Arizona State at 22 years old. So I wrestled awesome. from 22 was, to 27. That's awesome. My, by the way, my, my son is uh, graduating from Arizona State this, this, uh, this month. So yeah, baby. Go Sun Devils. Go, baby. Right? So maroon and gold, do what you're told. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's, that's what I'm saying. When I, when I say that, that, that my dad taught me those, you know, what, like I didn't know what it was. I just, oh, he's having us close our eyes and we have to visualize it. You get the butterflies, you get the fear, you get the, you know, you're going to feel that, but you know, you're like, okay, you're down two, to, you have down two to one and there's 10 seconds left. You got to get the takedown. And then you actually do it in a state championship. You know what I mean? You actually perform it because you've been there already. Yeah. He took us there already. Right. Here. So we believed it. We've been there. So it wasn't new when we were actually physically doing it. You're prepared. And then he was rigorously physically. He had us prepared. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, like, uh, people say it all the time. It, it's, it's all right to dream, but you actually have to put in the work. I mean, otherwise it's just a dream, right? Yeah. And yeah. That, to, to set it, yourself to a goal. It's, it's a combination of both things. So you, what part of the military did you go into? I was with the Air Force, uh, Security Forces, and then um, became um, Phoenix Raven. Okay. So, so with that, um, Security Forces is basically um, the military police and, you know, the, the infantry of the Air Force. To look at it that way, we do security, we do everything, but I got into... The Phoenix Raven, which is became the elite part of the security forces that we do demos, um, just really you know whoever we attach to or or whatever it needs to be done really as far as force protection, just just a lot of stuff really. So how'd you? What's your? How'd you get into the fight game, or what's what's your? What are you doing? Well, what happened was uh, we have a mutual friend. Um, his name is Mike, and um, like OJ said, we had we. We started off as, you know, this is before OJ. I was like, hey, man, you know, let's, the pandemic hits, let's build a community over competition movement. Wow. So, so I have a group of friends, which is um, Nico. He's a member of Tribal Theory, and, um, and they started a group called B-Lot. B-Lot is um, – Three guys. One of them is Elima's fiance, Eliminator, and um, Nico just hit me up. Hey, man, we're gonna throw an event because that was the initial plan was to help other businesses to give other businesses business as far as bringing people in with mm -hmm. good vibes of music and you know our culture and whoever it is. So we started off at Lima. That's when I met him. Right. So Lima is a, a Bellator female flyweight champion, and her husband is Jason Sensation, who plays in the B Lot band. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Mike, who he's talking about, uh, is a member of our gym, our training partner, but also does a lot of video videography for the gym alliance for Dominic and for us ourselves. Like in Vegas, he was with us behind okay. the scenes yeah. and everything. He's just been um, 
that guy, but also a competitor and a veteran. Yeah. So it's tight knit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it started off as um, um, a guy named they call him the Kuya Ron Jolido. Um, he owns the Good Life Tattoo Shop in downtown by um, a lower left, um, and I brought Nico there. Because, you know, everything was closed down. There's no concerts. There's no... Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So... People are hurting. Yeah. So I took him to the Kuya shop. And then we just, you know, we were just chopping it up. And the Kuya is like, you know what, man? With this pandemic, we should start a brand. Because we're all about hustling, right? You know what I mean? And if, you know I mean? You can't, you can't say you're a hustler if you can't make it in, in a pandemic. Out of, uh, yeah, out, out of a pandemic. So we started this brand called Hustles My Muscle. In <laughs> lifestyle, right? Nice. So, so really what we, what we do is not about like, you know, I mean, people know that what we can do for the community, right? And um, so I was like, all right, let's run it. You know, let's run it. So did the groundwork for it. And then um, next thing you know, you know, we're throwing events for other businesses. Nice. And we're bringing people, and you know, and and we felt the love and and, and the communities. Like, I don't know, like hope. I'll say, mm -hmm. you know, during a pandemic, right? You know, so and especially the business owners that's hurting, you know. And um, Kuya was like, yeah, I've, I've been giving. I gave this um, brand to a couple of people, and they didn't want to run it because at that time too, I never really used hustle because for me, hustle is is a corny word unless you're really doing it, doing it. Absolutely. So, so we just started it, and then we met, and um, mm -hmm. from like community, community over competition movement to like another movement, mm -hmm. which is. So what happened know, is, uh, I show up. Mike invites me to Alima's house, and I'm thinking we're just gonna watch the UFC fights because our our teammate <laughs> Angela Hill is fighting on the card. I'm like, hey, pay per view, I'll be there. You know, right. it was last minute. I didn't know that there was gonna be a band, that there was gonna be several businesses in Alima's huge backyard. And that it's you're rubbing elbows. You're, it's community, right? Now, so and in, in a way, you're networking. You're and networking, and it's just like I, mean, I go up to the table and I see all this. I was like, I see the hustle is my muscle hat, and I'm like, how much? And then he's like, let me check. And then he comes back over. I'm watching the music now. I'm watching Nico and Belot play. I was like, where am I right now? This is good <laughs> vibes. I feel so good. And he comes over and he says, sure, you know. And then from there we started talking. And it's like what's your vision? I was like, wow, well, I've been, you know, I've been thinking about creating a jump rope for during the pandemic. And we got, we talked all night. It was just, look, people aren't even able to go to the gym. Right. At that time we had Dom just fought. We did the whole camp on his top deck of his house because gyms are shut down. This is April, May. He fought Henry Cejudo May 9th. We did all that training by ourselves. And one of the tools that we used that we used since we were kids, poor kids was a jump rope. And I, I told Dom, like, and I told Izzy, like, we're fighters, and this is a tool that we use, but it's a two-fisted philosophy that your life is in your hands. But it's just a tool. It's just PVC and, and, and rubber. Right. But it's what you do with that tool. And I looked at it as an opportunity. He's like, well, when are you going to run it? I'm like, oh, man, I don't have a logo. I'm not, you know, I was just talking, and it made it actionable. Next thing you know, I'm creating the logo. I'm contacting you, U.S. manufacturers. Um, hey, you know what? We, that, we move from there. That, move from there. That, take me through that, because that, that's always uh, that's part of the thing that we're doing doing here. Because there's so many people out there, and especially during a pandemic, that you you have ideas. You but but there's there's not a whole lot of education out there. That, I mean, mm -hmm. and it's 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 scary to make that jump. So, like, how how you got the idea, but where do you start? Like manufacturers your people, and your, your model people, I, your what, what i saw and to answer that question is i saw the hustle is my muscle they had a display of hats merch everything and i'm like i'm asking questions who makes this who makes that you know and then mikey the same connections like oh go to so-and-so go to Cody's, go to so-and-so hey izzy's like come to my property we'll make you the screen the screens you screen print them here it's like okay now we have a place to train and screen print merch wow. and, and and just chop up ideas and talk and be together amongst the same community. Nico, Mike, Kuya, Izzy, my family, everyone's family gets together. And next thing you know, I mean, right now we're now the next thing is coffee. We're, we're yeah. sitting up there we're like yeah. cardio and coffee, I'm like cardio and coffee. And it's like, oh, we have a roaster. We have a roaster in the family. 
that's starting his business. Now they have the Hustles by no, Muscle and, Blend. And, and, and now we have happened, Fight Rope Fuel. And this happened all in like a matter of a week or two, I'll say, you know, from yeah. that whatever idea or or um, meeting, mm -hmm. I'll say. Mm -hmm. Or um, it's just when just, you have a great idea. I mean, for me, I think if when you have a great idea and you know how to do it, just do it. Build a build a strong foundation, or even you know. Yeah, I mean, it's but the community. It's important. It's important because we we had, for instance, we had a, a, these guys from a, a car club, the Amigos uh, Car Club, and mm -hmm. and having a low rider in their in their world, it's it's an expensive thing. It's not cheap, but their community, they have people that know how to fix the cars. They do hydraulics. They do pinstripe, and they, so. Just it seems like just like you were saying, you were asking question. Oh, that guy point point me in the right direction, and you start right. because that's that's just a dream if you don't execute. But to have the the actual physical product, it's it's right. a whole process. Yeah, and there's more to come. There's hand wraps. There's boxing gloves. There's shin pads. There's a lot that's going to move forward in in the fight arena. Right, um, because you know. I, I mean, jump rope. What it's out already out there. You can buy it anywhere. But you right. know, that's did you think about that? Like, what's what's my 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 sales point? My well, no, what, no, what would be different? No. It, it started like this. If I say that I stand for a transformed world, and I and that and 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 that standing in love, how can I be a transformed person right now in this world where people are hurting, children can't go to school, mm -hmm. children can't play? What can I gift? What I can I give? It was. It wasn't about sales. It wasn't about marketing. It was just creativity and moving forward, dreaming it, declaring it, and delivering. And then it was, where can we go now? Okay, I've been to Mexico City for fights, right. forming fighters. Now I want to take my rope and share them with gyms of gym owners that I know there. And now the next step is, I know Goyito Perez. I know a lot of the Mexican fighters that take me to the orphanages now. I want to give them my this purpose purpose it's wow. outward, it's outward focus take me to tj yeah i'm in arizona teaching at boys and girls club san diego there's a homeless teenage shelter in, in downtown san diego where the friend of ours that owns cloak and pedal delivers food every thursday take me with you dominic said we're gonna go with you and then we're gonna go teach them physical education it's not about us it's it's outward focus it's not about what we can take the universe gives so we give if mm -hmm. we take the universe will take right, right. so yeah. it's energy Absolutely. And so I, if I, I say, believe in a lot of things, but I believe in that too. Yeah. Same. It's, it's, if you say that you stand for transformation of a transformed world, it starts with me. I'm responsible for everything for that kid who I was that kid. Right. You know, I was that kid where someone took the time to coach me, teach me, spend time investing in me and I'm giving back. That's giving back. And so it's not even about, uh, what can I get? What can I get? I'm going to get rich. I'm going to do this. And it's about me. No, it's about the community. You know, yes. like I said, I come from that migrant farming mentality of community first. You know? And that's, and, and, and it brought us together a lot of during this pandemic yeah. for the same people who have the same stance for the world, for a transform world. Yeah. If I stay, I stand for a transform world. I have to be that stance for a transform world. I have to give, I have to go to Mexico city. I have to go to Monterrey. I got to go to Puerto Vallarta, TJ and uh -huh. give. Uh, how about that? I mean, that, the the fact that you're you the fighting has opened those doors for you, and that's the great country. platform, you know, because uh, Dominic lives by those same standards. We, we we stand for a transformed world, you know, the fight community and those that surround in, in the same community. It's what can we do for the children? Yeah, that's it's, probably why, you know, we we just met. Um, I'll say it was July, July, and. That's probably why we get along the way we get along now is because we follow the same purpose within the community. And we can't, it's hard for us to do this if the community is not behind us, you know, because for me, I'm a big community guy. I never thought I'll be part of, you know, or even doing this, you know, and I guess I really had to embrace the fact that Hey, Dom, just call me. Hey, OJ wants to hang out with me. What's going on here? Right. You know, because I'm usually the guy that stays in the back and like, let's make it happen. And, you know, and we'll. we'll I, I think you guys have something uh, special going on with the synergy, you know, with all, with, with all that. And yeah. For me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big God believer. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I, it, it's all about community. It's all about, you know, reaching out and what we can do to lift other people up. Right. 
So I think the undertones of what I hear here is this beautiful community of people that are coming together for one purpose, and that is to lift people up and to give back. And that's that's, Cor- a, that's a beautiful thing. Correct, because we come from that too. You know, we're growing up in the church. It's like, what is Christ likeness? Mm-hmm. It's not just talking about it. It's not just learning scripture and, and, and then regurgitating that, but it's making it practical and living yes. out. If Christ walked this way, if Christ had this indwelling spirit and also the, the emotional <laughs> intelligence to, he can love the sinner um, through whatever they, that it, that is. What is that? You know, what is that? How, what is that love? I want that love. Yeah. I want to give that I until, think, until, until even persecution. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's love. You be this until you can't be it anymore. Cause that energy is going to go on. Yeah. Gonna Absolutely. Go on. And you get to choose. Do I want to be this yeah. positive light or do I want to be the, the negative energy? No, I choose not. I choose this. You have a choice. Choose this. Choose love. The answer always is love, 100%. Yes. Even in fight, I you couldn't have to agree lo- with yeah. you more. You have to we love need it. a lot more of that, my, especially now. My, well, my grandma just passed away. My, yeah. Mine yeah. also, man. That yeah. broke my heart. So, uh, how old was she? Uh, she was 96, 11 kids. My ki- my grandma was uh, uh, 97. Yeah. Oof. Wow. And she was, and well, she's, uh, it was tough. It was tough because she was, she was the kindest, most loving, yes. most forgiving. Uh, and she went through a lot of stuff. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but, but she, um, she could have been a bitter person easily. Yeah. And she was all, she always told me to the, her last days and thankfully 97 and she was mentally yeah. there physically. She started breaking down, but the most important lesson was do just do it with love, do yeah. it with love and you'll be all right. And cause it, I mean, she lost kids, uh, yes. went through a, a lot of poverty and and I could say, hey man, she would have been justified to to be bitter, and she was never that. I'm like, whoa, I was blown away. Yeah, my 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 grandma was like, you know, from from everything that I heard from from my uncles and my 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 dad is her thing is just like, no matter what, just love one another. Yeah, yes. we need we need a lot more of that, a lot man. More and, of that. and then and this is why we like this too, because uh, we talk about the fa- like right now. It's uh, unfortunately. Uh, people are quick to judge people, and yes. but if you, if you take five minutes to talk to somebody, even if they don't, they don't have your same beliefs, right. your same color skin, whatever, mm-hmm. take five ten minutes, and it's gonna be way harder for you to dismiss that person yeah. because yeah. now you're getting to kind of talk and, and and understand each other, you know. Well, especially Correct. what's going on right now. I mean, you know, you don't know if it is is the is, is the whole world. It's just they just have a different perspective now or the way they handle the situation mm-hmm. you know what i mean i mean i don't want to go political about it but you know what i'm no, I, absolutely. I mean I I, the way that i see it the, the way that i, I see ran to just, a public office oh, oh. <laughs> the, i mean just take the time to to know each other I mean, we have way way more in common common than, than than not you know that's the way that i see it it's it's the, the differences are minimal if you really break them down but unfortunately sometimes they take over yeah it's this look it's it's very simple it's very simple, and and if you if you are a believer in God and believer in that energy too, it's like you're either coming from fear, or you're coming from love. And if we use God in Christ, and His disciples, until the death, until persecution, it was love. If you come from fear, yes, it's going to be greed. It's mm-hmm. going to be what I what can I take? What can I take? What can I take? No, you're I limited. Choose, you're limited. It's it's limited possibilities versus endless possibility. And so when you ask these things it, it's because you stand in endless possibilities that you can create it, there's this space between you and i so if say if you say i'm looking at you right what do you see okay i see the microphone i see your headphones i see your hair i see your shirt but what about this space right here there's a space between us that nobody really focuses on what can we create right here that matters we have to look forward we can't grab from all of our all the shit back here yeah. to create here. We have to let that story go. Let right. every story go and stand in excellence to be mm. the best version of yourself so that others can be the best versions yes. of themselves to create in this space. And if you're not there, you're limited. But yeah. when you're there and you see this space as endless possibility, you can create anything. Yeah. Someone now, has to be a bridge. Correct. And that, but that's now, that's how it is in fighting. If I'm afraid to put my gloves on, if I'm afraid to step on the mats, if I'm afraid, to, I'm not going to progress forward to go from combate to the UFC. I'm not because I'm coming from fear. I have to love this. You have to love this. You, you absolutely, and and respect it. We we talked about yes. the especially the fight game. 
I talk about it all the time. I mean, it's it's um, like I said, I was more of a boxing guy, but mm -hmm. I've seen plenty of examples of fighters, especially when they when they kind of make it, you know. Right. And then now they're a little, they're sure. swagger and they're a little cocky. But matter of fact, I'll, I'll point a, a perfect example. Back in the day when Oscar De La Hoya was huge when he was young, he started singing mariachi, and I was like, oh, I'm cool, I'm cool, man, bro. It's part of my culture, and good for you that you try. But bro, boxing is a very jealous entity mm -hmm. either you dedicated your time and love to it you can't be splitting it yeah and once he did that i yeah. mean a couple of fights he just tanked because because you gotta always respect mm -hmm. the the sport especially in this i mean the mma is no joke you know yeah. you, you can't be just uh, kind of winging it you know um so orlando what's what's the best part of about the fight game is it the training is it the, yeah, the journey the, the process like i love a training camp you know i'm i'm my, I always find that I have extensive training camps because Dominic finished eight weeks. I'm a part of that camp, right? So I'm right. in shape. I could fight. If we, you tell me to make weight today on a Friday and I'm ready to fight tomorrow, right? Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm going I'm to spar today. Yeah. Like Tuesday, I sparred seven five-minute rounds. That's 35 minutes. Wow. And then train every day after that, right? I'm ready to fight. But the journey, the process, I love it. I love every part of that getting to the dance. It's not even the fight. I, I talk to people. It's that when you make that walk in that tunnel and your song is playing and you see your, your your poster or whatever it is of you that walkway to me is like that warrior or that um, gladiator walking through the arena you're never going to get that but in that moment being present means everything for me for that for every fighter you talk to every fighter that that i know that walkout it's so real you you can't fake that that adrenaline, that butterfly, the nerves, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller than you enter, and then it's time to fight. It's time to compete. That build up for eight weeks plus until that you your feet touch that canvas, that's what it's all about. What's gonna happen is gonna happen in there. One Absolutely. Lose or draw, right? right? You can't control the uncontrollables, but you can control being present. That's pretty much why we do it. That's and that's huge fighter, because to be present to live the moment and to enjoy the journey unfortunately and i'm guilty of that too like sometimes you get i mean life takes you right and you know you got kids you got responsibilities you got, sometimes you forget to enjoy enjoy the journey mm -hmm. and be present because if you're worrying about the future or or mm -hmm. still pissed off about what happened it's gone bro just yeah, yeah. you know be right here and in the fight game um I'm, that's i mean you can't afford to not be Focus well, and focus present. and present, but that also comes with gratitude, knowing that I had this camp, I had these great training partners, coaching staff, people that allow me to come to their properties and train. You know, um, a lot of community is built around the fighter. You don't do it by yourself. Oh no, no, that's the yeah. thing. That's a, a uh, thing. the fight game. Usually, you know, spotlights on the fighter itself, and you know, win, lose, or draw. But uh, uh, most people don't understand that it, it's it's a whole little village, that, right? And, that and makes it, them, that's the first thing when they ask you when they you know thank you to your team they thank their team they thank god and they thank the team because they you, you know how much it goes into this yeah it goes into even what about it easy do, did you do you ever spar or yeah, um, yeah i actually I actually um grew up in oxnard all oh, oh, right oxnard. Oxnard. so my, a, a, do you know what the uh, uh what's his name fernando vargas yes and, actually my neighbor i'm actually really good really with um his um he had a brother. great fight with oscar back in the day yeah. man but he was he was a young pup yeah. man you if you ask me if you ask me they threw him into the wolves and really? he was he he was he had a lot of heart he had talent yes but he was still a youngster yeah. and and in, in the game like any anything else you need a little bit of experience and yeah. it still was a great fight uh to this day is like and it was like like a good little rivalry yeah. but yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime yeah. they see oh, and right now the all the uh, garcias right uh, yeah. mikey garcias and all that have you um have you seen his his boys yeah really? yeah actually one of his boys uh fought in mexico uh he's he, he looks real uh, really really good he's junior? got a he's, yeah he's yeah. got a, he's got a little uh i've don't i've only seen junior and yeah. he's got a look a good uh boxing yeah. physique and seems like he's he puts uh time in the gym yeah um it, it's cool because um you know fernando vargas um moved to vegas so um his little brother you know stayed and now he's training um Who's he training? He's training on uh, TJ Dillashaw. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. well, so we got some rivalry going on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, but, but, but it's beyond that. It's more like, you know, like 
no matter what we're brothers you know yeah so um but that was that's my experience as far as like you know being in oxnard and and able to know those you know what i mean yeah yeah those professional fighters and and but you said you did spar a little bit because i mean uh it's, it's uh, been a while but you know i can tell you my that. story i I, uh, I love boxing and i i used to train when i was a you know a youngster and i always tell people it's best workout but uh yeah i sparred a couple of times and I read them real quick. I said, "No, nah, that's not for me." How bad, man! <laughs> yeah. Dude, it, it's it was. That, that's that's why I'm pushing it to my son. <laughs> and, get, and, and and um, his grandma and you know I'm, I'm surrounded by girls at home. I got three girls and um, I have my only son and just you know the grandma and um, my <laughs> wife thinks like when when he's doing jujitsu or I'm like hitting him. You know what I mean? I'm not hitting him, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You gotta. You gotta yes. scrap. You know? yeah. No, don't make, don't yeah. get me wrong. It, it was it's, it it yeah. was good and it, but uh, I think the following days where you start like, oh man, my ribs or yeah. this or that. Yeah. That like the following you, three, four, five days, you're like, yeah. Jesus Christ. But you have that reverence, you have that respect to know what it takes to go into. Oh, that. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, I've always said that. Uh, that's why uh, I have a lot of respect for anybody. Anybody. At the end of the day, people forget because I mean, but. You are risking your life up there. Mm -hmm. One it's bad hit. Death. That, that's it's why I was talking about being focused and being in the moment because you mess up and, and things can it's, it's horribly happened. go wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I, I know I got a lot of respect. Uh, you know, people like you that actually step in that and in and that um, and the mm -hmm. ring between the ropes. I mean, ring or the octagon, yeah, whatever it might be. Preparation is key. Preparation is key. You know what you're stepping into. You know what we're getting involved in. But that's why it takes that precision and laser focus on everybody involved. Yeah. So, and for you, do you, is it a combination of of your upbringing and then the college? Because whatever, you know, you got your bachelor's, and I always tell people like to go to through university, it's a little bit of the same thing. You gotta be there's so many so many dropouts because you got you gotta have some structure and have, be responsible and you know do all your things. And then you went to the military, so like you have like three things that actually like molded you yeah you know I, I had a father who was a um just a tactician and, and 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 we as a kid i wanted it and and i had to prove it and but my mom was also you know a nurse and and pushed academics so i had to be excellent in both uh, athletics and academics um and i and i and i it for me it's simple i competed in the classroom just as as much as i competed in the wrestling room or the gym now i looked at the kids next and like uh, let's see if you can let's see how far you can go let's see how if you can compete with me i'm a competitor i didn't have video games i had adhd but my mom was a nurse and never, never let, let us took meds she put us in sports oh wow so the competitive drive i still have to this day how come you went into the military before college i was i was i had a scholarship to wrestle i had a full ride scholarship to wrestle in college right after high school um, number one ranked wrestler in the state of arizona my senior wow. year 9-11 happened. I was a senior, I was 17 years old. Walked into first period. I walked in late actually, and I'm like, ah, oh, she's gonna, this English teacher's gonna ream me. And everybody's looking at the television. And I'm thinking, what's going, what movie are they watching? Is that Deep Impact? I remember thinking that. Is yeah, this yeah, Deep Impact? Yeah. And then the teacher's crying and students are crying and I realize this is real. This, this is happening. That same day, I went down the street to the recruiter's office and signed in swore in wow mm -hmm. I, it changed my life because i felt changed a lot of people also life. too because yeah. i knew you know I, pat tillman was a hero of mine um asu yeah. asu yeah. football yeah. player yeah. absolutely yes um cardinals football player that he did the same thing he took off he made that commitment Middle of his without, without nfl a, yeah, career yeah. without it without a thought a second thought he did it and, yeah and um, then people i mean to make it to the nfl same as anything else right this is big mm -hmm. time now you're there and i and he walked yeah, away it's from just, it. It's just what your belief was. My belief was that, you know, I didn't, I just felt it within my heart and I, I felt that was what I needed to do. So I bypassed um, college from, uh, you know, 17 to 21. And at 22, I, I went into college. But I also got to wrestle while I was here. I was on the All Navy wrestling team. Yeah, you were saying that. Mm -hmm. I, and how was that? It was, it was just tough. These are grown men. I'm a, I'm a boy. <laughs> I mean, we're fighting. We're fighting in the room. And I remember coming in. As a kid, 32nd Street Naval Base, the wrestling room, my headgear, and then take that shit off. That oh. Has, we don't wear headgears here. Wow. Jesus. That's why my ears look like this, you know? 
<laughs> I had beautiful ears. <laughs> but three years of wrestling in the Navy, you know, my first year I spent overseas. My last three years, uh, I became a wrestler and competed and traveled all around the country, all around the world during the 04 Olympic year, made the Olympic team trials. Like, it was great. So when I was beating college guys, when I was being, beating Arizona State University wrestlers internationally, wow. Tom Ortiz, which was another Arizona State wrestler, and now the head coach, there was nothing more uh, that was uh, I would be more proud of than wrestling for a Mexican American Division One head coach for a number five school. Wow! That for me meant everything. I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I wanted after I wrestled was to be a head coach like Tom Ortiz. And uh, we were in um, Battlegrounds, Washington, and I beat three ASU wrestlers. Uh, Damn, man, you beat up beating the, up your people. Bro. Yeah, well, I, I looked at it as like, well, this is for this is the Olymp 04 Olympic year. This is uh, this is a, an Olympic team trial qualifier. So wow. like, we're not friends here. Yeah, no, no, know? no. And then afterwards, uh, he hey. said, "When when you're done, call me." And I did, and went to Arizona State the day that I got there. I was gonna say it's also. I mean, you're if you're beating them up, I mean, it's a, like a recruiting. Yeah, I was thing, just, like, oh, I was hungry. You're showcasing I was yourself. hungry, you know, and, and and maybe PTSD. I don't know. I never, I've never <laughs> took psych meds, but I just need. Mm -hmm. This is where I handled. This is where I fought my demons as well on the mats. This is where I handled business. I didn't drink. I didn't party. I didn't go to TJ. I didn't. I didn't have a, a girlfriend. I didn't. Didn't do anything. I was so focused. My my four years that I was here, in the Navy. I didn't, you know, I have uncles. What'd you do in Singapore? What'd you do in nothing? You know, my second tour, I knew I was going to marry this girl. I bought the ring in um, Australia. Wow. I knew I was like, I, I'm going to marry. I, I knew God, God had one girl for me and I'm going to have a family and I'm going to pursue my dreams alongside a godly woman. And that's it. That's where I've been for almost 15 years. That's awesome. That is outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Congratulations. So, I was going to ask you about that, that the opportunities uh, to travel overseas to to go is especially even in the, the U.S. Going back to the fact like that we don't know each other, like even in the U.S., just it'd be good for people to get out of your city, get out of your state, man. Don't don't mm -hmm. don't even just assume people are yeah. a certain way or whatever. Yeah. Just but for you to not just the domestic, but to get the world exposure mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that that's huge right it, it is you know it's, i don't know if it's because we're just restless souls you know we can't sit still yeah we, i have you have to have to be doing something you know you always have to be doing something i <laughs> I, I, I can't sit still yeah. you know like <laughs> my wife said i have adhd as yeah, well it's so it's the same <laughs> like <laughs> hey um but now some to me it's important like you had your childhood obviously you were you knew that world and as a kid you're probably like holy crap is this the way it is but you know you you were blessed to come to the yeah. u.s and now you're like oh wow and that's i think that's a lot that people should do that yeah i know it's not it's not as easy but if you can if you have the opportunity go yeah. go to other places mm -hmm. meet other yes. people you know educate yourself about other cultures mm -hmm. and because that that's where the the, the respect starts you yeah. know like oh it's that's, it doesn't just because you were born here and this is this was your way of life you can't judge somebody that was born yeah. over here and you know no yeah. even the things that you know at home like number one we're the best we're this and then you go to other you go to the ancient world and you're like man no yeah. we're we're not you go to dubai i went to dubai at 18 it's mm -hmm. like the wealthiest nation in the world mm -hmm. but as a kid growing up in school and, and through media u.s is the best no we're not yeah. Yeah. No, we're not. It's hard yeah, to no. it's hard to swallow that. Even young to see yeah. that physically, the people are beautiful. Their culture is beautiful. It's different from ours. It's Eastern culture. It's ancient. Right. You know, this is where the Old Testament and the New Testament were written in these parts of the world. Yes. Yeah. Jesus was not blonde hair, blue eye. He he was probably tanned like us. You know, <laughs> and yeah. darker and, and some yeah. and some facial hair and some chanclas. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> really, quite honestly, some like, chanclas. Yeah. You know what I, it, it's just like. I know that from my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I messed up, here's the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It depends. She, she like, makes you a believer with yeah. that chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It depends on if, you know, what country you go to because, every you know, you go to a country and like, that's the mecca of whatever religion, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you learn from there too. Absolutely. You, adjust, I, you know, you broaden your, your, your scope of things. You're not so narrow minded. Yeah. It's a broader view of life and like, Hey, every, it's okay. Yeah. We're, uh, we're every, wherever it's human race yeah. and it's different everywhere you go. That, that yeah. it's, if people would understand that we'd be yeah. a lot, a lot. because you come yeah. home and guess what? You, when I, you're like, I don't want to fight with anybody at home. Yeah. 
I don't want to. I just came from a war torn yeah. war zone and country. Like, I don't want to have that. I don't want to. Someone honks at me, I'll get out of your way. Yeah. I have no pride, no ego here. I don't want to yeah. fight with you. Because if that thing <laughs> consume you, it's just gonna turn into hate. I'll fight anyway, you in the cage, you know? but so whatever consume you, whether you know if it's if it's negative, it's gonna come out. Absolutely. Yeah, know? I agree. Hey, uh, and not just because you said chancla, but what about that? About uh, because you're you understand Spanish, right? Hey. Some, uh, yeah. That's huge, man. That's the other thing that I I don't I don't get. People, I wish I was uh, trilingual. I wish I was, you know. Yeah. The more, the more languages, yeah. the better, right? Yeah. What's wrong with that? No, it, it is. It's just it's just it's just immersing yourself in culture and, and, and diversity and inclusion. You know, it, it's important. You know. So I, when you go to Mexico, you, do you kind of like at least try to interact and? Oh yeah, de most definitely. Our teammates are, you know, Goito Eric Goito Perez that fights for Bellator. I mean, he's he's famous he's there now in puerto vallarta but he spent the week with us cutting weight in vegas you know like and is bilingual and and it's just you travel the world with these friends and and and, and where they're from he's from monterey but he's he's commentating today tonight in puerto vallarta for uh lux fight lux is another organization that started up during the pandemic and it's imagine just, that like going back to what you guys were doing and you said you know you, you're in the middle of the pandemic to have this idea and to bring the community it's uh how about that starting a, a lux in the middle of a pandemic that's yeah. but that shows you like that, that they believe in their vision they believe in what they're doing i mean because it's, it's not easy for sure it's yeah. just the energy i think because i mean whoever thought you know two different communities two different lifestyle you know meet in the middle and now it's just going with the flow of how are we gonna do better now yeah and you know, what's next so we just go with the flow and um we and Cause we call it we call it Izzy's Island. We go, go. We can't wait. Our day off. Our day off is on Wednesday. Okay. Tom, Guito, and I. We can't wait to get to Hamul to breathe in. He's he's being modest. He, you know, he just has call it Izzy's Island. The well, because I'm there every day. You know, but, it's 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 a it's a it's a getaway. It's 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 yeah. euphoric. You yeah. know, it's beautiful. The, the 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 trees, the mountains, the air, yeah. and just being in good company. Like, um, and he's also being modest because he he. He has patience and he takes care of people. And so when Goito saw that for the first time two weeks ago, we're picking up some of his patients and Goito gets out of the car. He said, like, hey, man, I didn't know Izzy does this and has these facilities that he takes care of people. I love him even more. And he shed a tear as we're stepping foot onto his property. Because I didn't tell him that. I didn't tell him Goito that. But he asked us, you guys want to go with me on a ride to pick up my, some patients? And yeah. Uh, for his facilities and and it for Goito that was like whew, humbling. That's yeah, yeah it's huge. He's man. already he's gone looking out for your uh, yeah. brother and sister. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we have like um, our first three. Um, one of the oldest clients we have, so they don't really have any family. And um, since they were the first ones, so they we house them now. You know, wow. at the at the facility, but the rest is you know, like the rest of. Cause they're in and out usually it's a it's a it's adult is a an adult residential care facilities and the family had it for you know more than 30 years now so um me and my wife's actually kind of taking over everything you know mm -hmm. um and it's just a matter of time now that it's just me and her right all the way so now we're just trying to maintain the new way a new approach to this business either we're going to continue it or you know for for the for, I, I mean i'm a big what's next for the next generation the next generation is our kids you know and and it's different now too as far as the you know the the upbringing of kids everything is tech everything is sensitive everything is you know right. i can't tell you this i can't tell you that it's just i can't take this away because you know, it's just so much. It's, it's, you know? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a different world. I I always kind of like hesitate because I remember when my dad used to say certain things, and you're growing up, and you're like, ah, nah, whatever. You don't yeah. even know what's up. <laughs> but it, but it's but it's Let's do it. But I still it, say that. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it is different. It is, and then um, it's good to to actually have your kids. I mean, the way that I see it is just it's not all about being in your room and just yeah. you know with some headphones and or your your phone. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I was, I, I, I'm thankful that I was put still part of like, you, you go out there, you get on yeah. your bike and you're with yeah. your friends and you hang out. Uh, but you said something really important, like uh, as far as going to his property, I think we all need that too. That, that little break, that little space mm-hmm. where it's, it's just for you and you. Yeah, that reset. And, <sighs> yeah. And you're like, oh, and you kind of stop. Uh, cause, cause sometimes life is, you know, just, yeah. and it's taking you to have that space and time for you and. Even if it, I'm, when I say for you, I'm not saying just by yourself. I'm just saying like that where you appreciate mm-hmm. and and take it all in and say like, oh, yeah. cool, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know. Yeah, you're gonna have to come to the property. Yeah, you we know? should. We yeah, should. Because really, what we what we crave and we apt for really is genuine vibes amongst each other. Because you know, you meet people and what is you know what is there? How genuine is this person? Is what's the motive and this and that? Right. You know, if you that's 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 probably why we get along so much that. We always crave that energy of, yeah, being, I, you know, yeah. just that genuine vibe. We say we're trying know? to, we, we say we laugh about it now, but we're trying to chase that vibe that we felt yeah. in July. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to chase you know? it. You know, but it, no, it's, it, for instance, we had another guest that, uh, uh, what, the first time that he, he got on stage and sang, and he was in high school, and he felt that little rush, and he says to this day, "I'm chasing that little rush." Yeah, you know? yeah. and it's good because it's a it's a good thing because it keeps you like yeah. well, going. Like, just like I told you, that walk, you know, if if I can yeah. put that, package if, it, if I can sell it, sell that, <laughs> so people can feel that. That's what it is. Even in college, even in you know, rest, you go through that tunnel, the poof, poof, the smoke, that is like it's huge, man. The music and yeah. I yeah. mean, even as a fan, it's it's. It's like wow, man! Here we go. Here, mm-hmm. here comes the moment, right? Yeah, it's 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 pure. I don't, uh, other, other thing I can say. For, no, but it's, but it's but pure. for you, it's even I, I can't even imagine because you 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 train for this all the all the hours, all the sweat, all the hard work, and here we go. It's for this moment, you know. Because yeah. as, as a fan, it's obviously you know they, you're hyping it up and people are getting pumped up. Yeah. But for the fighter, this is I mean. Yeah, like you know, last night I have to tell Dom like, hey. I didn't run it by you because he's a coach right now where, is, where our coach is away. I'm like, hey, I have this show to be on in the morning. He's like, okay, well, we'll train at 5 p.m. I'm like, I have to be ready. You know? <laughs> I have to be ready because after that, we have his, his, his yeah. gathering. But, yeah. Yeah. His get together. But yeah, it's like holding each other accountable and holding each other responsible. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's love. Accountability yeah. is love. And if I say I love you, then I hold you accountable yes. to your word. You know, yeah. hey, you, we said we're going to do this. What, yeah. What's the same vice versa and then you build yeah. on that right because yeah. really you relationship gotta, yeah you gotta really yeah relationship it's like you don't waste time on relationship you know it's an invest yeah, invest, yeah. invest, yeah, invest, invest, invest your time energy. it's like you know you've been friends you know how many friends have you lost along the way you know yeah. and then and then it's like oh that's why i tell my kids now i said friends comes and go but there you hit a certain age or certain you know um part of your life that you need to embrace the real ones Right. You know, um, it doesn't matter how long or how, sh- you know, how short, you know, that person, you just got to embrace it and go with it and understand, you know, what they're doing outside of you guys' relationship as far as like, you know, as OJ, I mean, they train a lot, you know, and there's no way when they come to my property or they, you know, around me, they're the one going to be taking care of me. They need the, the, the they need the full R&R. You know, you gotta, you just, something have to give in, you know what I mean? Right. So, and that's how I see it. That's probably why, you know, we're here now and, I don't, and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> we're here, yeah. But hey, <laughs> and, endless, endless possibility when you yeah. stand in that, when you stand in, uh, you know, uh, be, do, have, um, you stand in endless possibility of, you're creating, mm-hmm. you're creating. Cause what's, what's the alternative? Nothing, nothing you're being happens. stagnant. Yeah, your feet don't move. Yes. Right. We're meant to move. Yeah. You know, absolutely. We're called to be that. We're called to be that for our brothers and sisters, for each other. God called us to be that, to serve one another, outward focus, service to others, yeah. servant based leadership. And that matters. That matters into the core, you know, of who you are. Cause your children will have that. My father, mm-hmm. my grandfathers were like that. My father's still today like that. I mean, he's building on his property in Arizona. He's sending me pictures of a house. He's building a, a, a huge tree house for my kids you know like <laughs> he pops you don't have to do that you right know? he already built us a house within his house yeah. now he's building the kids a house outside you know and, wow. like, and I'm, I'm waking up two mornings and he's yeah. like hey can you send me this my son's cristiano is five he sends me a picture of amazon what he wants me to get which are the um the climbing 
uh, the rock climbing pegs. Right, and right. I was like, I'm brushing my teeth at 7 a.m. Like, you got it. Sent it, you know? <laughs> like, you yeah, got it, Pops, yeah. you know? Because yeah, I think when you get older, man, it's just like, how, you know, how you're going to leave this world, you know? It, it all depends on what legacy you leave the next generation, especially if you have kids and family or, you know, especially when people are looking up to you out of nowhere. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, it's, 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 but that's the platform. And also, you know, you, if Dom was here and sitting here and if he didn't have to run practice, he'd probably be here telling you the same thing. Like, it's not about me. If anybody, um, he's outward focused, extreme yeah. to the max, what he can do. You know? Cool, man. We need a lot more of that for sure. Uh, well, listen, guys, we, this, hopefully this is not the, is the first, but not the last. And we're always going to be hopefully in contact because uh, we, Chris and I love the fight game. Mm -hmm. And we love to just kind of be, but even even if it's not this, so just just let me know. Hey, you know, today I'm doing this or that, and we love to kind of share whatever you're doing. Um, Absolutely, you guys are are, are not only uh, talking the talk, but you're walking the walk, and you can feel it. And I think this this us getting together here was uh, you know was not our design; it was by someone else's. And I'm really thankful for your time but you know before we go we obviously there's there's a lot here we see it all over the all over the screen fight rope let's talk about fight rope for a second let's get into it <laughs> yeah like i said it's something that we i i built i created i thought about through the pandemic where uh you know people were not having access to gyms or um tools and i thought this is a tool that i had since childhood uh mine was a leather rope my dad they, yeah. back in the 70s and 80s they used leather ropes so right? i grew up with the leather yeah, my, rope me, yeah me too through high school, college in the Middle East, I'm in Iraq, I have a rope, you know, I might not have a gym, I might not be able to train how I want, but I have a tool, I have this, it's in my hands, I control this. It's a two fisted philosophy that I can do this in the middle of the dark in the desert. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's my tool that I can use that brings me solace that that gives me a piece of home. And that I have at that time, I'm going to make it home. And then it's a tool that I still use today, you know, that it, no, it, and it for anybody out there that doesn't, you should start doing it because it's like anything. Now you can. You get, need to be focused, mm -hmm. and now, uh, in a way, you you're present. There's another mm -hmm. way. You gotta okay, jump, and then and it's yeah. and, and it's good. It's even uh, you know it's stress relief. Yeah. it's good to just. It's it's a great uh, if you can do it or start doing it. It's a great. I love it. I love you, you get your playlist. You, you know, I you know people think that oh, hard rock, heavy metal. I'm like no man, my dad used to pump Marvin Gaye. And would jump rope for 20, 30 minutes before he hit, really? before he hit the bag. <laughs> and so to this day, it's Marvin Gaye, 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to try that. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you have to be present. You have to feel it. You feel the rope. You feel your feet. You hear the rhythm, coordination, balance. Also, you're getting a workout. Right. So it just was something that uh, for mental health as well as physical education, physical fitness for the body, it's, it's just a tool that it encompasses all the above that I know is a tool that we use as fighters. Every day we do 20 minutes of rope before every wow. session. Wow. Every day. That is no joke. Every day. I encourage people to do 30 seconds. Yeah. And, and also the foundation is in the feet. Everything you do, yeah. everything you do starts from the feet. Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. Everything. So, yeah, it's just, it's, um, like I mentioned, it's a tool. It's, 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 it's something that we're, we're fighters, obviously. You know, what, what's your fight? What's your, what are you fighting for? That's, 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 if anything, the, the the slogan, I guess you can say, a mission statement. You know, what's your fight? We're alongside. We want to stand shoulder to shoulder with you, whatever your fight is. Yes. Yeah. Well, good, man. I mean, uh, I am going to try that yeah. for sure. And with, with some Marvin Gaye Marvin Gay. <laughs> music in the background. But, mm -hmm. hey, good luck. The best yeah. of luck with the product. And not just that. I know you guys are going to expand to other type, uh, you know, product, five products with uh yeah, fight rope yeah stay, so, i mean uh, even now like Saturday. we have fight rope fuel we have a we on um you Saturday. know we have fight rope fuel coming out which is awesome uh yeah. you know i'm big on cardio and i'm big on coffee so we <laughs> through izzy we created uh um, a roast yeah hey we, so soon. that that i mean we'll definitely do another set yeah. uh another session oh, yeah, we'll have we our coffee to, here yeah. for that one yeah for sure. For give sure. me some coffee we'll, yeah. we'll just you know like i said i mean just like this we'll talk about it and uh See what's going on with, with the fight game and your training and of course. your property and you yeah. you help it, the whole bit, man. I loved it. Thank yeah. you guys for coming in, man. Thank I really appreciate it. it. Yeah, is thank there, you guys. Um, I want to talk about like the um, for the last. I don't know if you guys have time. No, yeah, so, go ahead. We got all the like time the, the, the new movement that we're um, actually pushing right now. It's um, it's um, it's called onlystronger.org. It's basically for 
sexually abused children and that is that was traumatized um family that was traumatized and actually going to trials and because um my niece was um my niece was victimized oh man so three years ago so my cousin came up to me and said because you know i don't know where to start i've been getting rejected by the big big corporations and this and that because they said we're too little to push this because it's been you know it's it's like it's been silenced all the it's been silent all the time right so um, it's just recently, just two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually going to have our first fundraiser this Saturday um, in La Jolla. And uh, Five Row um, Drips in La Jolla um, gave us the access to to really everything to push this movement. So um, I think I brought some shirts. Mm -hmm. yeah, I brought some shirts. Um, we'll, we'll definitely keep yeah. us posted. We'll put it yeah. on our stuff. And if you have like uh, events or anything like that, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll put the, you know, the date, the time. And uh, you, you send us some pictures of the teachers, whatever. And yeah. uh, we'll gladly do that. that that's, a, that's, that's huge, man. That's yeah, huge. thank you. Yeah. Any, so. any of that stuff we can support you guys on, uh, we definitely will be all about it. And we'll get it posted up to our website and to our Insta and all that sort of good Just stuff. Thank you so thank much. Thank you guys yeah, for having us. Appreciate it. We appreciate you guys for coming out today. We appreciate all the love that you bring to, uh, sounds like not only just in our presence today, but a lot of people in the community and, uh, keep fighting, keep fighting for that and keep fighting, yes, keep, keep your fight up. Mm -hmm. Um, we appreciate you guys. God bless you guys both. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks guys, man. We'll keep in touch. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the other side. Please download our podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and on Instagram at The Other Side Presents, and visit our website at www.theothersidepresents.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on The Other Side.